Hi, this is Chris from Chris Knacks Modeling, and we've got Greg from Greg's Workshop on the other yeah. camera. So this is part two, or second in our series of tips and tutorials on modeling products. This time we're going to do it on glue. So I'll hand you over to Greg and you can make a start. All right, thanks, Chris. Um, I guess we'll start today with, uh, like we did last week, with the products that we use the least. And so where I'll start is with acetone. Um, as probably most of you know, just about anything that's a filler or well, anything that's got a solvent in it can be used as a glue. Um, acetone, MEK, um, lots of things like that you can buy as thinners can be used as glues. Um, but probably you should be sticking with, um, not with these so much, but with some of the other ones that we're going to um, talk about here um, as actual glues. So they're good for things, lots of things, but maybe not the best glues. And I know Chris has got a couple of those too, if you want to talk to those real quick. Yeah, I guess so what I've got, that's in my own container, is cellulose thinners. So another one, like Greg said, that you can use it as a glue. It's quite strong, so it does fuse the plastic together. If you do use things like cellulose, it will stick together and it won't come apart. Probably the best use for things like this are if you've got two large sheets of flat styrene and just put it in between, put them together, and then we'll fuse together. As far as gluing parts on, probably not the way to go. Um, yeah. Like I say, it, it's just um, a solvent that evaporated. There's no resin or other binding agent in there, so probably if you haven't got anything or you're doing large flat surfaces, it does work but not really that good for, for models. Yep. Another one thrown on that vein is, are the epoxies? Um, in this case, like plastic weld, I get the, the right way around, um, which we use for putting miniatures together, for example, when there's big gaps in miniatures, you need to stick them together, you use some epoxy. Um, so it is actually, I actually do use this stuff, both the plastic weld and the steel weld. Um, you can know, always also use like the five minute and 30 minute epoxies um, for that. So it's another one in that space. Yeah, that's, that's one that I forgot to get out. It was the five minute um, epoxy, also milliput, so, but I don't, you know, as you say, ma for massive, for massive gaps, if you've got to like fill a gap as well as bond it together, I suppose they've mm. got the uses, which if you've got that larger gap in a, an aircraft kit or whatever, you'd probably be throwing it in the bin anyway. But as you say, for figures and stuff like that, I do know they have larger gaps, so they have got the uses. Yeah. You just you don't use them too much. Um, um, other stuff in that space is there's uh, plastic struts and weld-on products. Um, a lot of those I just don't have. I don't think Chris has either. Um, um, the whole range of those kinds of things. Well, I've got this one here, which is um, another very very thin a bit like you know works like a bit like cellulose thinners it's a plastic contact uh, cement invisible joints very very thin a bit like probably the same viscosity as extra thin maybe even thinner than that to tell you the truth uh, we use it for again if you start in sheet really good or um, if you need to compare in a very thin joint but it's not like extra thin where it evaporates and doesn't leave any stains it does melt the plastic so good for certain things it, it does glue really well i've got to say uh, we used it for more for the scratch building side than actual kits and as you can see it's quite full so we don't use it that much yeah I, i'd say like the uh the the plaster weld stuff you know those are similar to that they, they tend to be a kind of aggressive too aggressive for an airplane or a lot of the, the, the finer modeling, but they're good for, for scratch building. Mm -hmm. Right, I've got a couple so of... Maybe some more exotic stuff you got? You got a couple it... of kind of exotic Oh, things yeah, and I haven't got it. We're all that to do. I'll have to go and grab it. Um, you'll do the next one, and I'll go and get it. I forgot to get it down. All right, um, so something that's only mostly only available and applicable in the United States are testers um, blues. Um, Tester has a line of food glue and they have a line of these things. 
And if you're somewhere where you can't get anything else, these are okay. Um, if you're going to have them around kids, they're probably better than like tamiotids and some of those because they are quote unquote non toxic. But I've got them. I don't use them. I don't even have the tube ones anymore. Um, the tube ones are worse. These, these, these ones with these nozzle are a little bit better than the tube ones. The tube ones are just horribly thick. Some people like them for, for situations like you just use an epoxy on where you just need to with something that's huge together. But these guys um, are a little bit better. One of the biggest problems with these is the nozzles. Um, and the nozzles are so bad that Testers gives you um, a piece of wire with it. I don't know if you can see it there on my hand for opening the nozzles back up every time you open the bottle because they don't, um, they won't stay open even with the lids on them. And so there's there's one of these that it's for plastic, the black one, and then there's a clear one that's supposed to is is uh, I don't know what kind of glue it is, but it's more like PVA that you would use to say put on a, a wind, window screen or something. So if you're in a place, you can get these anywhere. Um, they're in the United States, testers kind of like home in Europe. Um, every hobby shop's going to have testers, so you can get them almost anywhere, but not really recommended. Yeah, I guess so. What what um, we got the same? Got Humbrol, and I've got Ravel. Again, you can buy these in the tubes, which, to tell you the truth, I don't even know. Go oh, I might have one here thrown somewhere. The only good thing about the tubes is if you're nostalgic, you know, back when you were a kid, that was the only thing that was available. Yeah, oh no, I can't, I can't, <laughs> I can't find a tube, which doesn't surprise me. Um, the tubes are just not controllable. You can use the tubes, but you need to put it onto onto something, a piece of, not a piece of plastic, it'll melt it. Onto um, I don't know, a piece of masking tape or anything, and use a cocktail stick. So it's it it is usable, but it's quite thick to tell you the truth. It's and very very aggressive, as Alex found out when it melted the tail on a Spitfire that he built. He was these, he was on holiday, and that's what came in the kit. These probably like those ones you've got there are um, they've got a lot of resin in them, so they're pretty thick, even. They're, they're not as thick as the tubes. The tubes are the thickest, but yes. these are a little thinner. Yeah. But even these, I, like I put them in a plain wing, and I could not get the plain wing. It was a really good plain wing. It was Tamiya. I could not get the two pieces close enough together to be thin. Mm. Um, I was scraping it right out and then going back to Tamiya extra thin to, to make it work because this stuff is just too thick. No, you know the, the testers, is that a, like the nozzle? Is it plastic or has it got a metal insert? No, it's plastic. Well, what? And they're made... You chop them off as you go along. Yeah. Well, what um, Ravel and... Oh, they've got two different ways about it. Ravel and Humbrol here. Humbrol, they've got... This one's called uh, Precision Polycement. And what it is, it's like a um, hypodermic syringe yeah. needle at the end. Um, which does give you quite good control. And I know if you buy this Ravel... They do the same with exactly the same sort of um, needle on the end. The only problem is, same problem as you have, it blocks up. But this yeah. is so fine, uh, it's a pain. And the only way I've found to do it is to pull it out and use a lighter or a match or something and set fire to it, which burns it mm -hmm. all out. But then, taking this in and out, it, it actually goes, that's quite loose then. So... Yeah. And also, when it's cold, it's so thick, you can't get it to come out of the syringe. Yeah, but unfortunately, the testers, is, it's, it's integrated. There is very little you can do for it. Um, and even with the wire, you're just pushing the dried stuff back in, so it either comes back and clogs it again, mm. or you've got to mix it in, try well, to set off the rest of your paints. They're really it's just not rough rubble them. Well, this Ravel one, it's the first time I've even opened this one, to tell you the truth. It came in with a kit. I can't even remember what kit. It was a car kit. Ravel, mm. the Ferrari. And what they've done, they've put, built into the end, it's the little pin at the end. Oh, yeah. So when you press it back into the nozzle, it cleans it. As you put it the top back on, it seals it and cleans it. That's pretty nifty idea. That's quite good. It's a shame that isn't longer, though. Mm -hmm. You know, that, okay, it's given it quite a small amount that comes out, but it'd be nice if it had got a bit of a longer tube on it. I think what they need is a combination of that one on this one somehow that when yeah. you put this on it it pushes 
an extra fine needle in there that goes on the inside of that or something. Probably physically yeah. can't do it, but but so you know. So happen to work for testers or Ravel or Humbrol and are watching this show? Yeah, but you know, if you look at them all, you'd come up with one good one that worked. <laughs> Take a bit from each one. Yeah. And you'd end up with a, a good applicating bottle. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, one thing I haven't tried that's available here in the States is they actually sell almost like a hypodermic needle. Well, store. I, I have tried it, but you have to be careful. I've got probably... Oh, I don't that. Two milliliter ones that, are, you know, like your hypodermic needle. But I have yeah. got a lot. I bought 100 2 mil ones, very thin, with 100 hypodermic needles in different. I think it was 18 gauge and 22 gauge. Yeah, which the they are disposable then if that blocks up. Yeah. But what you have to watch is what seal, like that, they've used in the end because it glues the seal. Ah, nice. On the cheap ones. They don't put a seal it's just molded into the end which is mm -hmm. fine the the plastic that they use doesn't glue so the cheap ones um oh, see if i can find one just to show that is an option and it solves the problem really yeah um it, speaking of if you're in the market for industrial syringes and what industrial syringes are instead of hyperthermic they've got a flat end on them they're what we use for um like this gluing or if I want to put five mil, half a mil of uh, uh, glycerin into my uh, something I'm making, I'll use an industrial syringe, and they're flat on the end, so you can buy them. Unlike regular syringes, which you know, like do injections that are much more controlled. Don't buy them from Amazon if you're in the United States. The cheapest place I found is Duda Energy, um, D U D A. Um, if you want to buy syringes. Well, I'm going to say, what are you? Is they slightly different to yours? Um, are these? Because if you look, there's no rubber seal. Yeah. They're just disposable, yeah. like one shot disposable. Yeah. So if you put that in the bottle, yeah. pull it up, get yourself. And for the price, they're quite cheap. You can use it two, three times. If it starts clogging up, just replace it. And you can also have different, obviously, gauges. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, for precision, is quite quite good. You just have to be careful that that doesn't start clogging up. Because you, what you do, it's deadly. You get to press it, it's a bit tight, you press it and you end up with a mill of glue flying over your model. <laughs> so, um, yeah. you know, it, it's one of those that, be careful. We've used yeah. it. These guys are rubber, I'll tell you that. But yeah. The, I the, have the ones in the rubber. Yeah, that's the problem with the rubber. The rubber likes to glue. <laughs> so, um, well, the rubber's attacked all kinds of solvent, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, the, the solvents at the seals and airbrushes, too, right? Same, yeah. same general thing. Yeah, so if you look for the, the worth of gold, the ones with just the moldy plastic. Let me test this because while we're up here, because. These guys from um, due to energy. These are these are four um, chemical environments. Like um, when you they, what they do is they make um, they're into making gasoline or uh, ethanol. Oh yeah, 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 oh. methanol, yeah. And so these are for doing solvents for gas. So I'm going to try putting some acetone in here and see what it does to the seal. Yeah, because I've tried those with acetone and that we, we've used them for PVA in the past. For precision, yeah. for going around canopies and that. Alex used to use them. But they do clog up. Um, yeah. But you, you can do the same as you do with the Humbrol. We we'll just use a naked flame and set fire to the glue. It doesn't actually yeah. melt or burn that part. So, But make sure you get the ones without the point on. Otherwise you'll end up stabbing yourself. They do yeah, do yeah. flat-ended and you, your normal hypodermic. Yeah, and if you're in the United States, they won't. They hate selling you the ones with a when needles on them. Um, they don't even like selling you ones with the non pointed needles for the drug use. Mm, yeah, I suppose, yeah. Here. yeah. You can, but you gotta really go look at And the other good thing about them, if you get the right size, they end up as once I've clogged up or you've used them a few times, 
you cut them down and they're really good barrels for machine guns. Stainless steel, very fine, hollow. Mm -hmm. Stainless steel tubes. <laughs> and you can get them in 18 gauge, 20 gauge, sorry for the caps. Um, you know, really small. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, that's those. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. What do you want to talk about? Uh, did you get some of your exotic clues yet? Yes, right. That's some bad stuff that I don't have. There it is. It looks really good. <laughs> now you have to keep this. There's two different ways of going about this. You can either keep it in a dark box or a dark syringe. Why don't you tell them what it is? No, I'm not telling them what it is. <laughs> but because okay. I bought it from China, they went the cheap way and just bought a normal syringe, so <laughs> they had to put it in a polystyrene box. Oh, you can see it. That's roughly how thick it is. You can see the bubble traveling to the top. So it's not extremely thin, but it's not that thick that. And this is cold. This is probably only about five degrees because we're off, off kept it. Uh, what it is, it's UV glue. Um, what it was designed for, or used for, is for gluing uh, mobile phone screens. It's a glue that's actually activated by UV light, and it dries absolutely crystal clear. Obviously. Uh, your mobile phones you don't want um, discoloration when you're gluing this screen on so all that you do is apply it thin layer of it put the two parts together and shine a UV I haven't got it here a UV torch on it to activate it does it in about for those of you in the United States sorry that's a flashlight for you oh right yeah <laughs> yeah that's what Greg's here for he's a translator for the Americans um, yes um, a UV flashlight you can actually buy this off eBay. It is quite expensive, the decent stuff. Um, but if you want to put canopies on and keep everything crystal clear, and like your um, PVAs or other canopy glues tend to take a bit of time to glue, and it's still a bit of a flexible um, glue, even when it's dry. This stuff dries quite hard, and it's literally done in 15, 20 seconds. Job done. You're not waiting overnight for the glue to dry. So UV glue, not used that often, but it does have its uses, but you do have to keep it in the dark, otherwise it does deteriorate in light. So, how is that? What kind of bond is it? Is it brittle? Is it really strong, weak? Well, to tell you the truth, if you're putting canopies on, you don't go around trying to yank them off, so I've never tried it. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> try, try pulling your mobile phone screen off. <laughs> yeah, grab your mobile phone and see if you can yank the screen off. <laughs> if the if yeah. the glass breaks, it's quite strong. <laughs> you know the parts that you glue with it. Um, there are a couple of videos on there. There's the first one that I saw use it was um, somebody in Japan doing a Tamiya motorcycle where you got the front screen. To glue that on um, and any excess you just wipe off with a q-tip cotton bud and zap it with the UV job done in 15 20 seconds really really good and it is crystal clear so that, that that's a, a good option it's one of those things you've got to do a lot of modeling to justify the price yeah. you know so it's, it's so limited yeah. you know it's clear parts you're gonna put one clear part or two per model you know, and something like that, I think, is about 20-something pounds. So $30. Yeah. yeah, so it'll do a lot. It'll, it'll last you years. But yeah. to get your money back on it, it's going to be years unless you, you know, you, you do a lot of clear parts. Unless you do a couple hundred models a year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So uh, that's UV glue. It's useful, but you know, not a popular one. But as it chooses. Okay. Do you want to? Sure. Let's let, um, talk about. Um, yeah. While we're on the, canopies. We're on canopies. Let's talk about white glues, IPA glues. They call they call wood glues in the United States school glue or white glue. Yeah, and I've got. Um, I've got a couple examples here. I know you've got some as well. Um, Elmer's in the United States. Elmer's school glue is that what they get called IPA in 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 the UK, um, and it's a 
it's, it's pretty good stuff for putting on canopies because it won't glaze your canopies. Um, I have in a pinch used wood glue because I don't have any any um, any white glue around the house, um, and it's all right. It's just off colored. It doesn't dry really white. It's clear. Um, and then there's specialized versions of white uh, whiter IPA glues. Um, the folks that do Microsol, Microset um, do one called Crystal Clear. These guys, Microscale Industries, the bottles are quite distinctive. Is, is that a clear price? Oh, you, you have, you have, was that retail or not, or was that just their bottle? No, this is just one of their bottles. Oh, I was going to say, because that, that's white, isn't it? It's just uh, a white. It looks like PVA, doesn't it? The um, Crystal Clear. Yeah. Um, I just don't happen to have any Crystal Clear stuff. So. No, neither do I. And I should. I keep saying I'm going to get some, but never do. I'll get some this year. <laughs> And the other one I just decided to try um, when I was at the hobby shops last time is Formula 560 um, Canopy Glue. I think and, that's available in the UK, I think, from what I've seen. Yeah, and there's another one by another company called Something 56. Um, essentially, one of them is a copy of the other one. I don't know which company is which. Um, it doesn't matter too much. And this is supposed to, supposed to be really pretty strong, um, but I only know the reputation because I haven't tried it yet. I'll come back sometime and tell you guys how it works out. But white white school glue is cheap, easy to get. IPA glue is cheap, easy to get in the UK. Good stuff for putting canopies on. The only trouble with it really is you have to wait for it to dry a little bit longer than some of the really fast ones we're used to. One thing with them, is the IPA based um better to sand than the water based? Is it less rubbery or is it just that that is I think the big downfall with a lot of the canopy glues. If you've got excess on it just kind of comes off. Mm. Yeah, that, that, I think that's the only downfall. Let's say I've got this one here, which is, again, I haven't got the crystal clear, which is Deluxe, Deluxe, Deluxe Materials, Glue and Glaze. It says for making crystal clear windows. You're saying for bonding canopies. But um, the only thing is, it does dry, dry crystal clear, I've got to admit, but. It's got that bit of a rubbery texture, so if you don't clean it up and you've got a little bit of excess and you try sanding it or catch it, it peels off. Yeah, I tried to fill around one of my model canopies a little bit with white glue and happened to sand up next to it, caught it, and that was kind of the end of it. It just pulled off a bunch of it. Yeah, it, it, it's not, they're not that strong because they, they can't bond to the plastic. It's just like stuck on the top, isn't it? So. Um, <laughs> Mind, yeah. yeah, you need a bit of a texture there. If you've got it a super duper paint yeah. job, and then you try gluing it or bare plastic, it doesn't bond very well. Yeah, hit it with some little bit of sandpaper, a little bit of rough sandpaper. Oh. Yeah. And this for Formula Five Sixty is also says it's flexible, so it's probably not. Probably the same thing. You can't sand it. But yeah. vinyl ball, something. It's got vinyl in it. PVA. Yeah, I guess say, um, I'm I, like that. Yeah, I think that, that is the only downfall with most canopy glues. And to try and get over the problem, what I've done, because what you tend to find, if you've got a gap, it's going to be around the canopy. You know, they are just prone for not fitting. And it, it's always the awkward place to get to. And it's, it's always a thing that stands out on a model. Because you always look at the canopy. You know, you want to look at the actual um, cockpit. Now... Now you, you've got that, that I use in conjunction with this to bond canopies on. <laughs> I was going to say, let's talk about how Chris cheats when he's in a hurry. Yes, <laughs> we use that, <laughs> which is the same as our pledge. It's, it's, it, everybody calls it future, but it's not called future anywhere anymore. I no. Don't think. It's called pledge floor care here. And um, it's called... <laughs> It's all you, kinds of things all over the world. Yeah, Especially this is multi, mul right stuff. Yeah, mul so multi-surface wax in the UK. That's it. Changed colour of the bottle again. It used to be orange and blue. Now it's yellow and blue. Um, if you dip your canopies, which we get on, it's a really a different one. Dip your canopies in this stuff, which you watch a lot of people do. Then I use your normal Tamiya. Extra thin. Which normally you cannot get away with because that stuff will craze your canopy. Yeah, and you've seen it, it does work, doesn't it? I've done it on the last half dozen models. What, do it. what you do, you put it on the fuselage half first, around where you want the canopy to bond, let it go off a little bit so 
the fumes have actually evaporated. Turn the canopy upside down and put it round that side. Again, either blow or, you know, let the fumes evaporate and then put the two surfaces together and they weld together. That canopy's never coming off again. It's, a, it's the same as putting two halves together so you can sand it and it does fill gaps because it actually melts the plastic slightly. It does sure, work. In the future, clear coat your canopy first. Yes. Out of trouble. So yes, you might get into trouble. I haven't tried it without because I thought, well, if it's not broke, why take the chance of <laughs> trying it? I'm not, you know. The conventional wisdom is that that stuff crazes or the canopy. Yes, it, it probably does. I mean, and I, 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 it's conventional wisdom, you just go with it. Yeah, we're having a disclaimer here. Don't use this. I use it, but just don't use it because I don't want the blame. <laughs> But I always make sure I don't put a lot on and I make sure that it started to go off before I put the two surfaces together because it will, like Greg says, fog it up. So, and for God's sake, don't get your fingers in it and then try and put the canopy on because you end up with fingerprints everywhere. So, not the easiest. Good results and permanent, but not the easiest to use. That's the trouble I've got with that stuff. I got Tammy and Ultra in here too. Um, I always get fingerprints. I'm, I, somehow I'm going to have to stop getting fingerprints. I tell you, I, I, I have the same problem. Where, where, if you wear latex gloves, it doesn't capillary so well. Yeah. And that is the problem. When you touch it with your finger, it tends to capillary along your skin and it goes everywhere. And you don't even realize until you've got half a dozen fingerprints. Yep. And I'm getting better because I'm very aware of it, but you know. Even when I'm trying my hardest, I still end up getting that under my finger. At least a little bit of smudge somewhere. Yeah, that, that is one downfall with most of the glues that we use. That mm -hmm. you can get fingerprints. It does actually dissolve the plastic. So if you're touching it, you're going to mark it. Yeah. And that's one thing about the testers is it doesn't smell very much. Um, like I think I said, if you're using it around kids, it's a decent one around kids. But because it doesn't smell, it can't have the good solvents, quote unquote good solvents in it. The stuff that works tends to stink. That's just how it works. Yep, yep. Right. Yeah. So, you want to just talk about um, the whole, so there's two, two main Do you have any others before we get to those guys? Sorry, it's all right, you yeah. broke up then. Sorry, what did you say? Um, so there's two major work harvesters that we use most of the time. Oh, yes. Through, I think. Um, do you want, do you have any other glues? Oh, yeah, about? yeah, we've got this one. I forgot about this one. We've got this one. Um, it looks a bit suspicious in a nail varnish container, but this is how it comes. And actually, it is used in the nail art industry. And what it's actually designed for is gluing the nail file or nail art onto your nails. It's a white glue. It doesn't smell that much, to tell you the truth. It looks a little bit like PVA. There's no real smell to it. But what it is, it's um, a contact adhesive. Um, but it's obviously if you're putting it on your nails and that, it's not going to have too many solvents and that in it. But what you do, you apply this to the surface and you let it dry, almost completely dry. Not quite, but almost completely dry. You can touch it, but you know it's not quite dry. And then you apply the film. It sticks to it within seconds really, and then you remove the excess film. You just peel it off and there's only... The film's only stuck to where this actual uh, glue is. And I've, I have used it for um, a few experiments. And it does work quite well. I haven't tried bonding two plastic parts together. Mm, you know, um, might be worth trying it on two two parts. Letting them both go off and see whether it works as a contact adhesive. But I don't think it'll dry rock hard. Because I've just I'm done that. And I, I can tell round the lip that it's slightly rubbery. But it... it for cars, what I actually bought it for was, I haven't got any here, um, is the foil that you can buy comes in different um, patterns. You can have, you know, stripes, metallics, um, zebra stripe, leopard skin, and you can actually use it for your car seats in model cars. And this is the glue that you actually use for gluing it. I have tried other glues and none of them actually worked. This one does. This is the proper stuff for um, 
I presume he does gemstones and that things like that as well. But this is what they use on women's nails or men's. I don't know. You never know. Uh, nails for sticking the foil. So worth a go. Worth a go. Yeah. What they stick on gemstones with it, it probably has to be fairly tough. It's... Yeah, I should imagine so. Um, but obviously, it's not going to fuse into the nail, so it's not going to be mega strong. You know, you right. imagine it melting things into your nails, uh, you'd soon have some lawsuits. So, I don't know. I haven't used it too much, but... I might have to buy some of that zebra stripe for my um, car. It looks it looks quite good. Uh, there's some good patterns out there. I, I had the one which was um, like a pearlescent. You, mm -hmm. Whatever angle, it was different colours. Also, oh, what I had it for as well, a bare, bare metal foil. Yeah. You can have, you buy that, because that's quite expensive. Whereas this and the nail ones, they're in metre long strips. I think I had about six metres, maybe eight metres, for about pound fifty. Of this foil by about, I don't know, two inches wide. Which, very rare you need anything wider than that on a car. You mm. know, it's only trim, really, bumpers, etc. And that's what I initially bought this for when I... Uh, was going to do my Chevy, but I never used it in the end. So that's a fairly expensive blue, right? This is expensive. No, it's it's just not easily available for some reason. Um, it's probably only about a pound or so. This, you know, hmm. this small bottle. So. Uh, eBay China thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, like I said earlier, you hinted at there's really two glues that we use for most things, um, although I can't, um, there's a range of them, right? One of them is Tamiya's products, and of course the other is Super Glue or CA Glue. Um, Tamiya's got a number of these. I've got three of them here. I don't know how many Chris has got exactly, but um, I have Tamiya Extra Thin, which is probably the go-to glue for almost everything. Um, it's very quick. It dissolves and bonds really, really, really well together. Um, but it doesn't eat most plastic, at least not in models. Um, generally, it's really good stuff. The only thing is it kept, it does have capillary action. So it likes to go into a crack. Anytime there's two things to touch, it goes in there, which makes an awesome glue. But it follows your fingers. Should your fingers be anywhere near it, or a rubber band, or a piece of tape, or anything like that. So you be kind of careful with this stuff for that. Um, but otherwise, this is good. Um, the only trouble I've had with this at all is when it's really, really dry here and I've got a long surface to put down, this, well, this says it dissolves the surface. So it doesn't, the surface doesn't have to be wet with this to work. In other words, you can put it on, it'll flash off, and the surface will still stick, so like contact adhesive. But sometimes here, um, when it's really, really dry, this will go off enough, fast enough, that a large area can get the whole thing done quick enough. Uh, one good one thing I found that really 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 good for is a debonder. I don't know whether you ever saw my 109 build. Someone had already built it using standard uh, poly cement, and I wanted yeah. to take it apart and start again. And that's what I use. Run that along the joints. It doesn't dissolve the plastic, but it actually dissolves mm -hmm. the glue, and you can take the model apart. So if you've made a mistake, put that on, and you can maneuver the part again. This I know eats um, testers paint or testers on um, blue for sure. Um, it also eats um, CA super glue. Mm. Now it's not a real strong debonder for super glue, but it does do it. Mm. I read that um, after I had that happen to me, and I was wondering about it. I went reading, and yeah, the stuff, the chemical that's in it actually does eat, will redissolve whatever it is that's in super glue. Which could be very useful, especially on like horizontal stabs. You've you've glued it, you come back the next day, and it's sand. All you do mm -hmm. is put it on one, or the top or the bottom surface, not both, otherwise it'll fall off. And um, it'll just soften the glue enough to reposition it. Um, yep. Job done. Job done. Yep. Alex actually had to do that today with the Spitfire. It works, yeah. works a treat. But this stuff is great because it doesn't have any resin in it, so it's really thin. It won't if you spill some on your model, you discolor it, so it'll look bad, or it'll look like it'll look like it left something on it. But when you touch it, it's not actually anything there, assuming it's dried. 
you would have to let it air off, right, and go off completely. But then when you go and paint it, you can't. You don't, yeah. the, the, and you don't, you don't spill it out of your your mat because it destroys your mat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you can see online. I've already got a couple of little places for certain. Oh, on. we've we've knocked the whole pot over, mate, and the whole of the green comes off. <laughs> you end up with a black rubbery yeah. mess. It's, uh, it's I believe it'd be a right mess. Quite good for that. Um, and like we talked about on the last show, we can of course use this to make um, to the sprue. It you can make sprue with it. Yep. Um, then there are a couple other Tamiya cements. Um, oh, so there's Tamiya standard, which is this plus some resin. Which is um, this white one? Well, it's this, this white one in the UK anyway, which is standard Tamiya white bottle now, two fifty. It is available in the UK. It wasn't up until late last year, but Tamiya extra thin and the white now are available in the UK. Not expensive. Two fifty for that, and I think it's about three fifty for the extra thin. This is the Tamiya extra thin is available in the United States. The Tamiya standard, the white cap, is not available in the United States. The only way you can get it um, is to import it from Taiwan or Hong Kong or China or wherever. So you can't get the white cap stuff in the United States. At least I have not been able to find it on Blue Um Now, this stuff is labeled as cameo cement. Um, and I think it's the same as the standard stuff. I'm not sure. I've actually ordered some white caps st standard um, from China. They'll be here in another three weeks, maybe two now, um, to see if it's the same as this. Um, this, is a, it, this behaves a lot like how Chris described the standard Tamiya and Tamiya white cap, so I think it's the same stuff. And this is available in the, the coffee shop. It's a smaller bottle. Uh, it's 20 mils instead of thir uh, 40. You can say, unfortunately, standard is the brush. What? What? Oh, does Young give a? Um, I've just looked. It actually gives you what's in it. I just wondered whether it is no. What it says, it says eleven uh, percent synthetic resin and eighty nine percent. They don't tell you what it is. It's a lot of rubbish. But they put on eleven percent synthetic resin, so it could be anything, and eighty nine percent styrene organic solvent, which could be anything. Yeah. So really, they've not told you what's in it, but the resin's the difference. The Tamiya. Um, extra thin, we're pretty sure from research, it's 50% acetone and 50% um, butyl acetate. Yeah. yeah. And that, that's why it doesn't leave any marks, because it just evaporates. Mm -hmm. it's just an, there's, it's, there's no resin, so there's no residue left there. Yeah, all this one says is acetone, butyl acetate, and other organic solvent. So, again, this could be anything. Mm -hmm. um, what I was going to say about these, though, is the brush on them. Yeah. Show you guys. Chris showed me this, and I'll show you. So you can tell Chris. The, the one in this hand, the green cap, is the. Put them up there, left one. Yeah, that's it, we can see. We froze, but we can see it. <laughs> and the orange cap is the standard, and you can see on the, um, the fibers there how this one is like a fine pointer brush, and this one's more like a standard, big, old, nasty kids' school brush. Um, this one dumps paint. This one puts it right where you want it. So you really want to use the Tammy Extra Thin caps even on standard bottles if you can, can get them. One thing <laughs> that... Otherwise you'll get a dump of paint. Yeah, one thing I haven't mentioned, and I do know because my dad has tried it, Extra Thin, and my mom was complaining about the smell. So we, we got some lemonine, which you can't get in the UK, Taiwan again, and mix the two. So you get a slightly thicker, extra thin, which has its uses. It gives you the best of both worlds, and you get the nice smell. Yep. And it works. And this is lemonine. You can't get it in the United States either. Um, you have to import it from elsewhere. Um, you know, you go on eBay, you put in uh, Tamiya lemonine cement and pop right out. And you buy a bottle. You just have to wait for it to get there forever. And you can't read the label. Because it's all in Japanese, probably Japanese, I guess. 
Yeah. Now, so one thing I don't know because I haven't tried it myself because I've got no limonene. Was what he said was it is um, what you find with extra thin because there's no um, resin in there. You have to push the two surfaces together to get them to bond because there's nothing in there. It's just melting both surfaces, so it's relying on you pushing the surfaces together. Whereas because the standard's got a bit of a resin in, it just fills the gap in, so you don't have to push it quite so. But um, he said, if you mix the two together, you find then that the it's an instant. You'll put the pot there, and it's there instantly. You're not having to press it really hard, you know, as hard as you do with that. So definitely worth if you've got both in a spare bottle, have a play. It sounds a good combination. That you've got the extra thin doesn't leave too much of a mark. It will leave a slight mark because it's got a bit of resin in, but it doesn't dry quite so quick. So it's got that sticky. Um, like um, residue that the parts stick to really well and it doesn't go off yeah. quite so quick so you can cover a slightly larger area. The limonene definitely, this limonene definitely has resin in it. I, I, I painted over here mm. um, on my test plate and it leaves a significant resin behind similar to the standard. Yeah. Um, but it's much slower than the thin. Whatever yeah. is in it for a solvent is still actually liquid right now. Yeah. When I left. Yes, I definitely might be worth a, an experiment of mixing the two in different ratios to get to what, depending on the temperature in the summer, obviously, a bit of that might just make that extra thin, that little bit easier to work with. Yep. You know, and in the winter, the other way around, if you have a high percentage of extra thin, um, yep. it'll dry a bit quicker. So. But yeah, the lemonine smells great. <laughs> And there may be, I think Chris mentioned there, that there might be an extra thin version of Lemonine. Yes, I, I've actually saw it, uh, Hobby City, the two versions of Lemonine. It says Lemonine Extra Thin, and one just says Lemonine. Now, I have tried to trace it down, I can only find it in China. So whether it's some... They do sell genuine Tamiya stuff, because that is the thing, you just never know what's genuine and what's not, mm. but it does look genuine. But the fact that we can't get any of the lemonines in the UK, I can't even find out. Yeah. The shipping was just too expensive. It made a bottle about £15 from the one company Ooh. that I found it, so it wasn't going to happen. Yeah. The shipping was like three times the price of the actual bottle because it's a flammable liquid. It was just a nightmare to ship. That's the trouble with, with these things. They can, the importation just can kill you on some of this stuff. Um... What else was I going to say about the lemonade? I know there was something else. Now I can't think of what it was. Oh, well. Sell me. But, yeah. Oh, so I would say this is a set. If you're going to buy blues, um, the model with the, the extra thin is probably the second blue I would buy right after CA Super Blue. I'd probably use it more than the Super Blue, but you could theoretically model only with Super Blue. You had to. There's a few uses for Super Blue you can't do with this stuff. But this. You use it for everything. I mean, almost, almost. I don't know, 90 plus percent of the gluing you do, and the extra thin. It's not just us. Go watch other people's channels. Everybody, this this stuff, extra thin, the extra thin makes the industry go around. Uh, Mr. Hobby does uh, one very, very similar as well, and so I'll do a can. Is it a can? Uh, there are three. I think it was on what channel was it? Uh, Genesis Models did um, a comparison where you've got extra thin mr hobby and a can or i can they all do very similar obviously that there's only so many chemicals you can use you'll find there are a lot of them are just different brands that are more or less identical you know they're, they're none of, i don't think any of them have come up with anything completely different so you know for the brand. it's just that they found a really good combination the 50 50 of acetate and butyl acetate and butyl acetate slows the acetate down. That's really what it does. Mm. You can go look at, if you go look at painting material, I've been reading a lot about paint, painting and how they make paints. And there's a lot of different of these solvents, and they're rated in how fast they go off. And that just slows this stuff down a little bit. Otherwise, it would go off too quick. But, um, yeah, this is a really good mix. And probably everybody else has got the same. But they've got a really good bottle, right? It doesn't knock over very easy. It's got a great applicator. One thing I have found with it, it does work on modern plastics better 
than old plastics. The old plastics, if you know, were harder plastic, much tougher. The problem is it seems to evaporate before it's actually been like started to dissolve the plastic, whereas the modern ones are quite soft. It gets to work much quicker yep. and just and do a better bond. I think they put more plasticizers in the modern plastics because like the styrene plate and the styrene spins I got that are really hard styrene, it hardly affects them at all before it goes off. And you end up, what you do is you coat it once and you coat it again, right? You let one batch go off and come back around and you coat it again. And, you know, after it's gone off a couple of times, then it, then it bonds. Yeah, I found on like the very old Airfix and old monogram kits, obviously the styrene was, you know, more brittle, older. It didn't glue quite so well. You're having to put more on. The modern ones, you know, the plastic is quite soft, works much quicker and uh, easier. Yep. So that's, I don't know, is there more to talk about on Tammy? No. Um, I think we've, uh, we've, we've, we've priced Tammy up enough. Okay. We killed that one. Yep. Right. And the other, other glue of choice is super glue, CA glue, cyanoacrylate. You've seen this before because it came up on the left show. <laughs> exact same bottle. Same stuff. Hey, Mom, probably and as well. A couple of accelerator solutions uh, and a debonder. So this stuff is a surface bond. It's not a dissolving bond, but it's pretty tough for something that doesn't eat the plastic. Um, and you get lots of different kinds of thicknesses of it, at least three here. And so you can get different working times, and you can get it to like if you need. You've got two pieces that don't, if you want to hold them temporarily so you come to a butt joint, you can put a drop of CA glue in the butt joint to keep the two pieces together at the right angle and then come in with your Tamiya extra fit and actually bond the plastic together. Um, kind of like you would tack weld when you're welding. Well, I'll tell you what, we use it for a lot. Undercarriage struts, they're a pain because they always sag. So we tack it with obviously the um, CA. It's a bit, bit brittle. Mm -hmm. But then we just go around with the Tamiya Extra Thin, which bonds the plastic, but the CA holds it vertical, so we don't get saggy undercarriage. Yep. And then, right, the CA, you can make it go up instantly with an accelerator. Either accelerator or if you got powder of some sort, like baking soda, you can do that to accelerate it. Um, I know from reading that there are some professional model makers that just use CA and don't use the... the, the um, the, the solvents and then the reason they state for doing that is because it will break before the plastic does and so if they make a mistake they can break the model apart and go back and fix it whereas with the, the solvent glues you put it in there you weld it your plastic is joined it's a weld um the ca is not like that so it's got the same advantage the disadvantages because of that and then of course you know you want to be bonder with your CA glue, so you can get it off the stuff. Yeah, I guess I know um, acetone is a mild debonder. I have used it before, um, but the only problem is, because it's so mild, you need to do it a lot of times, and it does slowly eat away the plastic as well, so probably not the ideal debonder, but if you're stuck and you've glued your fingers together, you can at least use acetone if you've got some handy, and you haven't glued both hands together. And you use Tamiya Extra Thin for stuff too, because it's got acetone in it for the same reasons. Yeah, this says it's got acetone in it, but it doesn't say what else is in it, so I don't know. I haven't looked it up. I think it must be something that slows the evaporation down, because that's the problem with the acetone. It evaporates so quickly, it probably wouldn't actually dissolve the signer. That's right. why um, the Extra Thin probably works better than straight acetone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so... Yeah. What I got for adhesives, sir. Well, I've only got yeah. one left, and this one was today's. Ignore the colour. Oh, I actually put some pink paint in. What it is, is latex. Mm -hmm. Now, it's a bit useless for your usual modelling. Um, it's rubbery, it peels off, it doesn't bond to the styrene or anything. But if you want to put something there temporary, without marking your paintwork, or the plastic or whatever normally this latex will dry quite clear slight uh, I don't know yellowy tint to it but you know say this one I've put purposely this color so I can actually see it but what I've actually used it for today 
is if you look here on the Spitfire, I've got the panels that have been taken off the actual, uh, probably see them there they are, off the uh, gun covers. And I wanted to put them in place. Normally I'll just place them, but when you pick it up, they fall off. But just put a spot of latex underneath. It holds them in place. They're not going to come off. You, you know, you can move them. They're not going to come off. But if you want to get them off, they'll peel off and leave no marks there at all. So it was a temporary, you know, if you've got a figure, like I've got a few sitting on the wing and one leaning uh, leaning into um, one of the planes on a diorama. And I picked the, pick the base up and the figures always fall off. I don't want to glue them permanently. White tack and blue tack are hit and miss. But mm. from now on, I'm going to spot a latex. Put the um, part in place. Just leave it. It's glued there. Perfect. And if you want to move it, just pull it. It will come off without leaving any marks at all. Um, right along that same vein, the one I want to try is rubber cement. I know that spray paint artists use it to um, put masking down. And then the rubber cement comes right off you use it as a contact adhesive but if you can literally roll it with your finger and have it come off so they don't damage their painting or their vehicle or whatever they're spray painting so i want to try that i presume that, that that's probably his latex base then somewhere along the line then yeah yeah rubber is one of the original mm. latex right mm, so yeah very think, similar thing yeah i think that's it isn't it for the only other one which went over briefly was um yeah, sprue glue. Yeah. It actually does both, as it says. You can say it is a glue and a filler. Uh, we've used it for both, so that is another one. A bit messy, but because of the um, extra thin in there, it will glue a part together if you need it to. Yeah. All right, I think. I think that's, that's it for that's glues. Now, thanks for all the people that watched the last one. We were quite surprised how many people. Yeah. Uh, obviously, I'd got nothing else to do that night and managed to watch the video. So, you stuck around this long on this one, too. <laughs> I don't know how long this is, I just hope it has recorded. Um, so, if you know, if you think these are you do actually get something out of the videos, there's plenty of other things that we can actually go through. Or if you've got any suggestions, anything that you think would be useful, drop it in the comments. This will be on Greg's channel as well, uh, Greg's Workshop. Um, so if you go and check it out there, or check it out on mine, I'll link it to Greg's if you can't find it. Um, and drop a comment in either one of us, his channels, yeah. and we'll go through, have a talk, see if we can put something together. And we'll try and do this, you know, once or twice a month if we can, or however. Depends on how much interest we have in it, and what time we can work it out together. Yeah. So, um, thanks again for watching, and... Uh, I'll catch you on my next video, whenever that'll be. Same here. So, catch you next time. Okay. Catch you again soon.